Thank you, Honourable Speaker. I thank the Honourable Member for the question. Um, Honourable Speaker, there is a lot of data involved in this question, uh, and in, actually the source is the Fiji Country Gender Assessment, which uh, I had spoken about uh, last week, which has been launched, uh, Honourable Speaker. Also, the, um, the data itself is available, is available to members. They wish to get that data. But suffice to say, Honourable Speaker, I think the, uh, the trends of uh, domestic violence in our country to this day is something that is a national shame. Uh, we have higher than the average of the world average, which is one out of three women. Two out of three women in Fiji is, faces some form of violence, Honourable Speaker. Uh, in fact, it should be something that we as a parliament should pursue and support to declare it a national crisis. It's really reached that stage and it's been a um, number of years that the you know, governments have tried to tackle this issue, including the previous government. Uh, and of course, this is something that has uh, fallen upon uh, the government now. But, you know, it is, uh, it is really, really worrying in terms of our trend being above the, the, uh, the global average. And um, Honourable Speaker, just some, just, just some very quick uh, statistics on this, is that apart from the two out of three women that face some sort of uh, intimate partner violence, the, um, the forms of violence that are prevalent uh, and severe are hitting, kicking, dragging, choking, burning, or being threatened with a weapon. And from the statistics, these 15% um, these, uh, of the women state that they are attacked while pregnant. And while pregnant, they are being punched or kicked in the abdomen. The proportion of women who have been beaten during pregnancy is significantly higher among younger women. So younger women. So it's, it's increasing, Honorable Speaker. Uh, nearly six in 10 women over their lifetimes are subjected to emotional violence. So I talked about physical violence, now we're talking about emotional violence, six out of 10 women. Uh, the, um, the men who exert control of their spouses, uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, it talks about controlling behavior. So controlling behavior. Um, and then on to uh, the, the, most, the most common form of sexual intimate partner violence is marital rape. And that's in the statistics too. That um, you know, marital rape is the most common form. And also, Honorable Speaker, that um, women who face economic abuse, economic abuse, we report that about 28% of women face economic abuse. Uh, from a husband or de facto partner, either they forcibly take their savings or earnings, or they refuse to provide money for food and expenses. And so this is the form of economic abuse that women face. Honorable Speaker, the, um, we know the data that the Fiji Police Force puts out every year, um, the crime against women and, and children. The uh, biggest portion, Honorable Speaker, 73% are between the age of 18 to 35. So again, they're in the youth population, um, the young, young women who are facing this. Honorable Speaker, um, the, um, very quickly, just in the uh, domestic uh, violence helpline, in terms of the, uh, the number of calls that we received, of course, there was a spike in it during COVID. Uh, but then after that, uh, um, sorry, in COVID 2020 and then in 2021, it doubled in just the first half of the year from 2020. So, again, Honorable Speaker, in, in 2021, which is again uh, the recent statistics provided, women are reporting, there's increase in reporting, but they're reporting increasing, increased aggressiveness and intensified physical violence. And this includes burnt with hot soup, punched, kicked or dragged by the throat, whipped by their husband on horseback, threatened with knives or other objects such as bricks, 
stones, gardening spades, garlic powder, and firewood. So, Honorable Speaker, the, the data doesn't lie. It is uh, actual data that is available from the, from the Bureau of Stats and also collected through the Domestic Violence Helpline and also our, our workers. The business cost for violence, uh, we lose 10 work days in a year because of violence faced by um, women. And uh, because, again, those who are worried about women facing violence, uh, they say that they are distracted or unwell or feel tired from work, or they are late or absent from work because they are worried about um, the person going through it, uh, and supporting colleagues uh, also face some sort of violence as a result of it. They get the shrapnel or the collateral damage being involved. But Honourable, Honourable Speaker, uh, there are things that the, uh, the Ministry is uh, doing at the moment, which includes, uh, you know, we're very excited about launching the National Action Plan to prevent violence against all women and girls. And this, is, this makes Fiji the first Pacific Island country and only one of two countries globally to have a national action plan to prevent violence against women before it starts, Honorable Speaker. And this is um, yet to, um, to come to cabinet and to be approved. But it is, again, based on data and evidence about the root cause of violence. And what is the root cause of violence? It's patriarchy. It's patriarchy, Honorable Speaker. The entitlement that uh, that power has over women, and that uh, you know women uh, do not have uh, are not entitled to the same the same rights. Honorable Speaker, the um, the uh, the ministry um, would really like to see this as something that we can declare as a national crisis because of what our women and girls face. And we hope that the you know parliament will support this should we bring it to the house. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Minister.